Welcome! In this video we will begin discussing the Dirac equation but now finally in the context of QFT. So we have gone through the Dirac equation quite extensively but again that was more in a connection to relativistic quantum mechanics. Now we're actually going to dive into it using what we learned from the klein gordon equation from all that we did with relativistic quantum mechanics but now actually just focusing on QFT. All right, so everything that we did before is going to help us as a basis. So we will now begin with the Dirac equation. Um, now, before I begin, I do want to say in case that there is any particular topic that you would like me to cover, um, you can go here to ablebeast.com slash team slash Nick Hoyman University. Uh, you may notice uh, we rebranded a little bit. So yeah, the link is going to be in the description. If you go in there, you can either um, start a petition to, for me to cover a topic that you want to see, or you can support one that is uh, already out there. Anyways, so now remember that the Dirac equation is what I have right here, right? So I gamma mu, the partial derivative here, right? the, the four vector one, minus m, and then we multiply by our little spinner. So that's where we are. Where, where we, are right? we saw the derivation of that previously. Now, keep in mind, these gamma matrices are very special and they have to comply with a very special algebra here, which is the Clifford algebra. And that's that gamma nu comma gamma nu, right? In the anti-commutator, which means that this is simply gamma mu times gamma nu plus gamma nu times gamma mu. So like the commutator, but with a plus instead of a minus. And this thing right here is going to be two times the metric mu nu, right? And this, well, I guess we can multiply this by the identity in our uh, current dimension, which is going to be four by four, right? We uh, addressed previously that if we are dealing with the Dirac equation here, we have to be in a four by in, in a four dimensional space. All right, so this is very important. Right? This is the algebra that you sh must remember. Going forward without it is going to be impossible. So remember it tattoo it on your body, whatever you need, but you cannot forget about this. It's incredibly important. So the Lorentz algebra is going to be represented by S mu nu, which is going to be I over four gamma mu gamma nu. Now this is something we have encountered before. And the important thing to know here is that what this means that the Lorentz algebra is represented by this is that basically this is what generates Lorentz transformations and that's going to be very important for us right um, so basically rotations for example and yeah so this is something we will come back to very soon in fact we need to now do a little bit of a detour but we will come back to it in a moment so in three-dimensional euclidean space we are also going to be defining our gamma matrices at least for the gamma i's as i sig now this i would simply be the complex number i, not related to the index, it's a little bit confusing, but it is what it is, times here this sigma i. Okay, so based on this, we can now find the anti-commutator, but now valid for our gamma i, gamma j. Okay, so this is not the same as the gamma mu, gamma nu. Mu runs 0, 1, 2, 3, I is simply one, or, or rather Greek letters are 0, 1, 2, 3, and the regular Latin letters are 1, 2, 3. So I, J, 1, 2, 3, Mu, Nu, Rho, Sigma, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so here we can now, well, write instead of Gamma I, Gamma J, we write this expression that we just found. So this would be, this is going to be I, Sigma I, anti-commutator with I, sigma j. Okay, so now let's multiply through. Well, we can take the i's outside, which will give us an overall minus sign. And then we have sigma i, sigma j, sigma i, sigma j. This is the anti-commutator, so we get plus sigma j, sigma i. All right, but now we can use properties of these uh, Pauli matrices. And in particular, what we want to use, and maybe I'll, I'll write it in a different color, is that sigma i, sigma j, is going to be delta i j plus i epsilon i j k sigma k. All right, so again, 
here this chronica delta is simply going to be zero if i and j are not the same and one if they are the same and this epsilon here this levi civita symbol is going to be either one minus one or zero it is one if we have i j k or any even permutation of it so if you change any letter twice so if we change a and j and then j and k that's two times so that would still be one if we have one permutation it is minus one and if any of those indices are repeated it's going to be zero all right and well we have then this little sigma k here okay so let's plug it in so that would mean that this little anti-commutator that we're calculating here sigma i sorry gamma i gamma j this is going to be so now plugging uh, this in we get delta i j plus i epsilon i j k sigma k and now we get the same thing but i and j are now flipped so that means we have plus delta j i plus i epsilon j i k sigma k okay what does this mean let's go here step by step so we have the minus sign outside now delta i j and the delta j i are the same we can flip the indices with no problem why because they have two values if i and j are the same it is it is one if they are not it is zero it doesn't matter which letter is where if it's first i or first j doesn't matter so for that reason both of these are the same so we end up with two delta i j or two delta j i doesn't really matter then we have this thing so we have plus i epsilon i j k sigma k which we, we are going to leave as it is we are doing nothing to it and then we have this little thing over there so here we can now flip these two it's one of the properties here of the levi civita symbol we can flip i and j but we are a minus sign in the front so what what this means is that this is going to be minus i epsilon i j k sigma k and for that reason this and this cancel out so we end up with our nice little beautiful and important result that the anti-commutator of two of these gamma matrices but only with the if one two and three so the zero is not included uh, this one is going to be minus two delta i j all right so that's an important little property there so now we can use this result up here so we can now use this in our little equation up there and now we want to plug this into our result for s mu nu but now of course with i and j so s i j this is going to be so this is i over four commuter of gamma i gamma j we can multiply this through and we get i over four times gamma i gamma j minus gamma j gamma i and here there's quite a few ways to go about it we could use some of the things that we have seen before for example we could now um, just write the gamma i's and gamma j's as i times sigma i for example uh, that's one thing we could do we could also try to write this uh, use this property for example uh, there are several ways to do it i think i'm just going to go through the brute force multiplication i think it's going to be a lot more fun even though perhaps a bit more extensive but algebra practice is always good when you're learning something so don't be afraid to go the long way every now and then so this is going to be i sigma i times i sigma j minus now it's going to be i sigma j i sigma i so here well we have a bunch of i's so they all give us a minus sign so we get an overall minus sign outside so minus i over four and then we have sigma i sigma j so this is going to be basically what we had up here so this, this will be delta i j plus i epsilon i j k sigma k and then from this one we have minus 
delta i j and then we get minus i epsilon j i k so here i wrote i j it's supposed to be j i but it doesn't matter because it's the delta and we, you can just flip them so i kind of skipped a step there just to make it obvious that it's going to be cancelled out uh, in the next step so be careful about that uh, sigma k so with this as i mentioned the deltas will cancel out and we can again flip this sign so this time we get two times the this i epsilon part so we have minus i over 4 and inside we have two times i right this minus will become a plus once we switch these two 2i epsilon i j k sigma k the i's cancel out they give us a minus sign and this whole thing turns into a plus and then we have one half so this will be one half epsilon i j k sigma k so this is our s i j and as we expected this is precisely the 2d representation of the rotation group now we are going to be working uh, with the vial or chiral representation of the gamma matrices so this is called the vial or the chiral it's the same representation and we will see why it's called that way very soon right it's going to this representation will allow us to see the chirality very very easily when or to find the vial equations very easily which we'll do i think in one or two videos from this so what we have is that gamma zero will be zero one one zero and our gamma i's will be zero sigma i minus sigma i zero so now we can try to see what the generators of boosts and rotations look like for uh, for this case right so for the cara or vial representation so well this would be simply the s zero i's so we can go either here or to this part and plug in zero and i right you can do it wherever you want um what we are most comfortable comfortable with using i'm just gonna go up here for no particular reason so this is i over four and then we have gamma zero comma gamma i okay and well now there's a bunch of ways to go about it let's multiply through we have i over four gamma zero gamma i minus gamma i gamma zero all of this multiplied by i over four and we can now plug it, these matrices in so this would simply be i over four and then we have i guess i'm going to use a large parenthesis first so this would be zero one one zero multiplied by zero sigma i minus sigma i zero and then we get minus zero sigma i minus sigma i zero and then we have zero one one and zero okay so now we multiply through i over four and then we see so we have to multiply as usual this times this so we get uh, minus sigma i up here then we have this times this which is zero this times this which is also zero this times this which is plus sigma i and then we get this part over there so we have minus this times this which is going to be sigma i the diagonals or off diagonals are now zero and we get minus sigma i down here so we now add all this together and we get that sig s zero i is i over four and because of this minus sign we get this everything twice so we get two times sigma i zero zero and then we keep the the let's see the minus is going to be this is going to be a plus so there's a minus here and a plus here so okay just double checking okay so this two is going to cancel out and we get that our generators for boosts and rotations is going to be this in this representation so that's where you have to be very careful because 
different teachers or different situations may use different representations. So this is simply for the vile or chiral representation. So be very careful there. So now in general, we are going to use the expression that we found previously. So this is SIJ. And now keep in mind that there is an implicit uh, two by two matrix here. Right? We are working in the two by two space. So what we had written here, one half epsilon i j k sigma k has an implicit two by two. So this means that what we had is one half epsilon i j k. And this is now um, sigma k zero zero sigma k. And of course, each one of these sigmas is also two by two. So we have a two by two by two by two blocks. Right. So each one of these blocks is two by two. That's what I mean. So we can now and will be writing this in general as one half epsilon i j k and this thing right here we are going to call sigma so capital sigma which is like the summation k okay but this is a, a, a small one this is not the summation sign it's just the the same letter uh, sigma uh, capital sigma with a k, k index okay so that's what the this sigma k is going to represent okay but be careful there not to get it confused Okay, so we're going to be calling a four component field that transforms, according to this, a Dirac spinner. Okay, so that's very important. That's going to be the terminology here. So that's going to be a Dirac spinner. And the Lagrangian for this theory, that's very important, we're going to prove it uh, later. The Lagrangian for this theory is going to be psi bar. I'll show you what that is in a moment, even though we introduced it uh, when we did the non-QFT version of the Dirac equation. Del mu minus m. So basically it's the Dirac equation, but with our little uh, field bar multiplying from the left. And as I mentioned, this psi bar is going to be psi conjugate gamma zero. All right, so that's very, very, very important. Uh, to note. So this is the basic of what we're going to be working with in the future for the Dirac equation. And yeah, I think that's a good point to stop and we will continue diving into this in future videos. So I hope that this was useful to you. I mean, we just went over some of the basic definitions, did a few very simple calculations and, and definitions. So yeah, I hope that this was useful to you. If it was, please consider leaving a like and a comment on the video and maybe even checking out my Patreon or the Ablebees, as I mentioned. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.